Okay, so I've already made a few tweaks and changes to the power wall. Um, as you can see, I kind of have it in its place in my garage. Um, this is a um, is an incoming solar line, and um, it just plugs in an XT60 right into the power wall, and um, you know that that's that's how the solar comes into into the cart here and charges. I have programmed the solar charge controller, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, another thing I did was I rewired the switch. Originally, I had the switch horizontally like that, and I really hated having one switch horizontally, one switch vertically. I wanted them sort of both facing the same direction next to each other. Unfortunately, the, you know, the incoming has to come in at the top here, and the outgoing has to go at the bottom here. But I ended up making a new battery wire that was a little longer so I could move this over here and then the wire down to the inverter. Um, that was already long enough. So anyways, I'm happier with it, you know, visually having the switches both the same way and I can close the breaker and then close the solar breaker and, um, you know, everything then just turns on and it can just charge as needed. Um, the meter is also wired up. You can see it over there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so the battery's at 27.2. We're pushing in literally one watt. It's actually in the middle of a heavy thunderstorm right now. So there's no, um, I don't have any solar coming in. Um, I'm literally pulling in one watt. Um, and you know, that's the state of charge on the battery. I have set it to a max max voltage of twenty nine point um, two volts, and that's why it's, so that's why it thinks it's down. Even though these batteries actually are full, um, these lithium phosphates they settle a lot. Even though they're fully charged, their voltage settles a lot. So um, it's a little misleading. Um, these batteries are full. Um, anyways, yeah. Let me um, let me spin things around here a little bit. So the meter has four wires coming in, two measure before and after the shunt, and that's where it gets its, its uh, you know, amp reading from by measuring before and after the shunt. So those wires go up there, and then it also needs a positive and negative power wire, which that just runs over here and taps off the bus bars. Um, so the meter is, is uh, wired in, and, and um, this one's always on. Um, when, the, when the main switch is on, it, the meter comes on. The meter draws nothing. I've decided just to leave it on. Um, and uh, I think that's the only change was wiring the meter and move around the main, um, the main power switch. Um, let me show you around the solar charge controller. Okay, this is my Meg Sky Blue uh, charge controller. This is their smallest model, the 30 amp model. Since I only have, um, since I only have uh, 400 watts outside, the 30 amp model at, at, for a 24 volt battery can handle up to 700 um, watts. So this is perfect for, for the amount of solar I have. And it's only 80 bucks, which is, which is great. Um, so here it is. It is on. I have the breaker closed. It's charging at a measly 2.6 watts currently. But again, I am literally in the middle of a thunderstorm. So I'm not mad that I, it's not charging. That's, that's understandable. But let's talk about how you program this. It's pretty simple. Now, it's, it's different if you have lithium versus lead acid, but I'll sort of step through both. Um, the, um, so you press the program button, and then the first, then you get these D1, D0, D1, D2, D3, and they all mean different things. D0 is just um, if you want to set an hour limit on how long you want the charge controller to stay on. Um, by default, it's 24 hours. It basically always stays on, and, that, and obviously, I'm not going to mess with that. D1 is your float charge. Um, this is the, the voltage you want the battery to settle at. Um, if, but this only applies to lead acid. If you tell this you have lithium batteries, it will not use this for anything, so this does not apply. D2 is the highest voltage that you want the battery to charge to. And this does apply to lithium ion. So I do need to set this correctly. And the max voltage of these batteries in 8S configuration will be 29.2 volts.
but there's no need to take it all the way to that very top edge. So 29.0 is just fine. So I'm happy with that. Um, D3 is the low voltage cutoff, the lowest voltage you want the batteries to go before, you know, the, 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 the charge controller cuts off. But this won't really be of any use because this has um, load out connections. So you could use these load out connections to turn on a relay or turn on, you know, your lights or whatever you're trying to run. Um, and then if you get to the low voltage then of 20 volts, then the, it will disable this voltage out. Well, but I am not using this. I am not using this to drive any of my load. So the low voltage cutoff is kind of useless right now. Um, D4 is the type of battery you have. This is the most important setting. By default, it's zero. Zero is for lead acid batteries. If you make this a one, it tells it that it's lithium ion. As soon as you put it at, in mode one, it ignores that the float voltage, it ignores, the, it, it ignores a lot of settings. The, once you put it in one, the only other setting it cares about is D2, which is your maximum charge voltage. So I've set the maximum charge voltage on D2 at 29 volts, and I've set this D4 at one, and now it knows it's lithium ion, and it doesn't even, that's all it needs to know, and this thing is fully programmed. That's the only settings I need to change in here. Um, D5, I forget what D5 is. Um, oh, it's, it's a password for Wi-Fi. Um, and D6 is to calibrate. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if for some reason the voltage wasn't accurate, you could recalibrate. Um, but we're back to D0, and then I hit exit, and that's it. So the only thing I had to do was put D2 to the max voltage on my lithium pack and put D4 to 1 to tell it that this is lithium. And that's the only thing it cares about, and it, it's got its charge parameters, and it knows everything it needs to. And and um, yeah, I love how easy this this thing is, and and it just works. You know, I, I flick the breaker, and this thing just does its thing. So recently, I actually had some painting work done on my house, and I took my solar panels down for the painters. And um, turns out, I'd actually wired two of my panels backwards when I put everything back, and they were actually effectively cancelling each other out. And um, so that's why I was getting such terrible PV voltage. Um, but I just went out there, fixed it, and uh, the PV voltage is back, and we're getting some decent wattage off the panels. So problem solved. Okay, I also have my lithium-ion uh, power wall all put back together. I had actually stolen these two breakers for the... Um, lithium phosphate power wall and I had ordered a couple off Aliexpress they were just taking forever but they have arrived 120 amp um, 48 volt waterproof marine breaker and a 30 amp um, waterproof 48 volt marine breaker and um, so and they are in operation and hopefully they'll last they were pretty cheap at nine dollars a piece so um, whereas the ones I have on the lithium phosphate power wall I got off Amazon for almost $30 a piece. So I hope these last. They might not, but uh, they're working for now. I have load tested them um, at 1.3 kilowatts and it didn't get hot and it seemed to run just fine. So hopefully they do last. Um, anyways, um, um, yeah, you can see we're charging. I told you I split the solar. And so this one is pulling its own solar right now, pulling in 136 watts and topping up the battery. But the battery is pretty, pretty full. Yeah, it's 29.1 volts, so it's pretty much full. And then here is the uh, the Chinese inverter. Um, and I, like I said, I just, you know, it says 4,000 watts, but that's really um, 2,000 watts continuous. And I just tested it at 1.3 kilowatts and it worked just fine it was happy at 1.3 kilowatts the fan is a little loud on it but um it, it handled 1.3 watt kilowatts continuous just fine which for a chinese inverter is just fine so yeah i'm pretty happy the the lithium ion power wall is operational as well and so both are up and running